Mr. Rudy Williams here that um, we're going to be talking about sickle cell. This is an important conversation that I love to have, going to have. Um, we have some other people that may be coming in and out. But to get to the point, why do we need to have this conversation? This conversation needs to be had because most people don't know which is sad to say, most people don't know that sickle cell patients need blood that matches their ethnicity, meaning that it's mostly predominantly in the black and brown community. So we need black and brown blood donors to match blood. Now, I have been talking to people and, and, and getting people to understand that black people need to start donating to save lives. I literally had called this once before. I said, to me, this is a black on black crime that we can literally save lives if someone just gives some time. They don't have to give much. They just got to give their blood. And, and now with testing with the antibodies, with COVID, now testing trait testing that we do, this is a perfect time to find out what type of blood type you have, save, save three lives every time you donate a blood, right? You, you actually get to track your blood when we have these blue trackers in Maryland. And these blue trackers allow you to tag your blood to make sure it goes to an African-American sickle cell patient. Now, this is just information, but Rudy, you have a story. You have family around the sickle cell issue. So let's start with that story. Uh, uh... I'll try to I'll try to be as uh, concise as, as possible. Uh, uh, I shared with you earlier, uh, Dr. Don, I actually grew up right next to a sickle cell patient back in the projects in New Haven in the 50s. And I saw firsthand pretty much uh, the excruciating pain uh, that uh, pretty much uh, develops out of this disease. And, and the sad part about it is um, uh, there, there were no therapies back then. Uh, it was, it was basically, uh, you know, let the, let the crisis pass, pass by. It'll take care of itself. I mean, they had very little uh, back in the 50s. And uh, and, and then uh, to, to, uh, to make it uh, come full circle, uh, I married someone who has sickle cell disease. Uh, uh, she, has, uh, she has SS, and uh, she has been a, a, a real warrior. She's lived on this earth so far for 68 years. Uh, she's bucking the trend right now. And that's really due to a lot of therapies that have been developed since the 70s. Mm. And uh, she was going to be a part of the original hydroxyurea study at Hopkins uh, back in the uh, mid 70s, but she declined because she was really uh, very on the side of that. However, uh, with that being said, um, uh, our daughter, who is a uh, who was born in the early 70s, uh, has sickle cell thalassemia. I have cell thalassemia trait. And uh, so we've actually uh, been really involved in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, what could I say, the advocacy of how we can improve care uh, for sickle cell patients. And uh, when we moved here to Maryland 11 years ago, we pretty much uh, got involved with the local organization like we did back in Connecticut. And um, we decided three years ago that we would make uh, sickle cell patient care our priority. Uh, the golf tournaments were great. We raised uh, a lot of money. We gave a lot of money to Hopkins, to uh, the Harvard University. But we said, wait a minute. Right. I think we need more of a focus right now. Right. But we, we decided to do and actually, our membership has gone up for the three people, from about five people or six people that were involved with the association. We have over 70 members today. And that was all due to the fact that we focused on some really poignant issues uh, in the hospitals uh, right now. And that is, how do we improve care? We, in, in patient care for sickle cell patients, it's horrible. Like, it's horrible. Yes, it is. And, and, and with the pandemic, uh, uh, Dr. Dyer, it's gotten worse. Uh, protocols that we had put in place and some of the community hospitals that we're involved in, uh, they have just collapsed. Uh, even, even in our better institutions where they had uh, protocols put in place, uh, they have collapsed. It's almost like now we have to start all over again. 
again post pandemic and how are we going to do that and that's what our job is as catalysts mm -hmm. okay with the uh with the uh Chickasaw association of the Cecil and the eastern shore and we just took on the eastern shore last year dr dyer in the midst of the pandemic wow so this season because the eastern shore does not have a practicing um, uh, a sickle cell hematologist on the shore. So those patients, and we only know of four right. of our organizations, they go to D.C., they go to Baltimore for their care. If you know about the map of the Eastern Shore, I do. It's a three-hour drive one way to get care. That's, that, that's, that is unacceptable, Dr. Dyer. You know, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to be on the board of the Red Cross and I'm happy we, we've taken this fight up to have this sickle cell initiative drive. But this is, it's just like we, we have to literally create this awareness education piece for even black people just to donate blood. I mean, it's, it's, it's to me, it takes my breath away that there's a lot of people that still don't understand that we need your blood specifically to help patients specifically. And, and and we just this is the facts. African Americans donate the least. That's, that, 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 that's very true. It's been that way in, in our experiences uh, in, in the Northeast. And it's been our experiences down here uh, below the Mason Dixon line. Uh, we just don't come out and get blood. Uh, and I think I think Dr. Dyer, it goes back to way back in our history. In our history. I, I agree. Pretty much uh, uh, being very skeptical about um, about um, hospitals and, and care, and, and I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing about it is, though, uh, trying to get folks to understand why it is so important, okay, to, to match those antibodies, to match those antigens, okay, in, in the blood. Okay, to help our, our patients, and uh, I would have to say right now, um, uh, Neosha pretty much did a did a fabulous presentation uh, to our Harper County Caucus of African American Leaders in Harper County a few months ago, uh, along with Andy Davis, who's with the Sickle Cell Center at Johns Hopkins. Uh, they did a did a fabulous piece on why it's so important, and if we can if we can get that piece. Um, um, get folks to uh, grab that and, and see how important it is, then we can move it to bone marrow uh, donations, right. which, is, uh, which is right now is so critical uh, for sickle cell patients as they undergo some of these therapies to hopefully uh, 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 find a cure for disease, such as gene editing and bone marrow transplant, mm -hmm. et cetera. So uh, we just have to continue to tell the story. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that the Red Cross has, uh, has partnered with a lot of uh, CBOs, um, uh, community-based organizations, uh, to, uh, to to come together in this effort. You know, we we have we're going to make this effort a national campaign. I know it. Miosha Hudson has just been an amazing person to work with at the Red Cross. I mean, her the way she just really puts things together for all of us to really put this going forward. She's been instrumental of turning us into a great national program. I also understand that we'll be, we'll be partnering up with some NFL. We're going to be partnering up with some uh, national organizations, the 100 Black Men of Maryland, a national campaign, uh, also along with uh, the, the, uh, the Qs and the AKAs and, 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 and all the Deltas. And so we're really pulling together our resources to say, hey, we need to fight this thing together. If there's many things we can't do, this is something we must do to, together because it's only for us. You know, they say if you want to be for us, you then you gotta then you gotta be for us, right? That's exactly it. That's, a, that's exactly right. And um, <clears throat> we couldn't have a we couldn't have a better ally, okay, uh, uh, than the, than the Red Cross because. That's, that's our link to all of this. Right. I mean, there, there, I mean, there is a path now, even though, um, uh, uh, Dr. Dyer, uh, there are other organizations that pretty much serve other parts of Maryland. Uh, 
Del Marva, for an example. Okay, so they serve pretty much the um, uh, Delaware and the Eastern Shore. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been, we've been uh, attempting to uh, speak with them as far as having blood drives on the Eastern Shore. Um, uh, they don't do blue tagging, okay, and that's what we really need to get that changed, okay, uh, even though they're, they're away from a lot of folks, but we know that there are sickle cell patients on the Eastern Shore that uh, we, we know they're there. We just got to try to find, find them. And of course, we don't have a registry. Uh, sickle cell disease. We need a registry. Does not have a registry. We're working on that right now. They have it in the state of California. Right. That's they were able to get the $12.5 million for infusion centers in the state of California. They're the first state to pretty much uh, have a, uh, uh, a, uh, a uh, target for they just pretty much identify the areas in California, and that's where they, the legislature in uh, California granted uh, the money, and so they're, uh, they're, they're, they're being, uh, they're being uh, involved with the infusion. However, uh, Georgia, I understand, is next. Um, I heard that too. And I believe uh, New York is, uh, is, 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 is there too. And I believe Maryland, uh, hopefully, will get on board, hopefully, in 2022. I, I'm hopeful of that. With all the hope that we have and all the things that we're, we're working on doing, and you've been doing it for a lot more years than me, I had the sickle cell trait. So, um, and I was actually, I got malaria when I was in the service because I have the trait, which is odd because sickle cell is supposed to stop us from getting malaria. But being in the service, I actually end up getting malaria because we were taking these pills to stop it. And the trait end up, you know, dismissing the pills, right? So I end up catching uh, malaria. So, This is a tough question. From your years of service in working with sickle cell, with your conversations that you've had countless with multiple people about sickle cell, why has it taken so long for this to become more aware? Good question. Uh, and the only thing I can, I can, I can tell you uh, Dr. Dyer from experience uh, when it comes to these teaching hospitals, uh, spaces, uh, we grew up, my wife and I uh, grew up around the Elder Haven Hospital as a teaching hospital. Yes, they, they pretty much uh, tested my, my next door neighbor, okay, with sickle cell disease. That's when they found out he had sickle cell disease. Uh, uh, and Johns Hopkins, that's another teaching hospital, okay, in, in Baltimore. However, what happens is uh, prior to the sickle cell center, you had a you had a lot of pretty much um, what can I say? You had a you had a lot of turnover of uh, of doctors who first of all um, they're, they're they don't specialize in sickle cell disease. You know? they're, they're they're few and far between. Right. I think that's one of the reasons why we have a tough time getting a sickle cell uh, a doctor on the eastern shore uh, because uh, that area especially is in like cancer research. And some of the other, um, uh, uh, let's say, more influential uh, mm-hmm. positions in the medical field, okay, where uh, we just don't have enough, enough people of color who actually practice. I think we, uh, I think we have. Uh, it, it, it's starting to change a little bit, but not fast enough. Not right? fast enough. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, uh, my granddaughter, okay, was was really thinking about becoming a hematologist. Uh, but then when, uh, when, she, when she saw about the, uh, as far as becoming a doctor, what that was going to mean as far as the expense factor. Mm-hmm. And, and, and pretty much, and then um, the, uh, the actual, uh, you know, the time that's, uh, that you really need to spend, uh, she decided she, she wants to go in another direction. And I think that's the best case. Uh, I, I, used to be, uh, I used to be an auto dealer, uh, Dr. Dyer. And, um, and when I would see credit applications from doctors, the, the amount of debt yes. they, they, they incur, okay? Yeah, they want to drive around in the Jags and the BMWs, but a lot, a, lot of their, a lot of their debt doesn't support that. That's right. So, so um, what's the, 
with the um, with the cure for that. And I, I think really the medical profession really has to come together and they have to make some decisions about what do we need uh, the most doctors to pretty much cure some of these areas as far as diseases like sickle cell and other chronic diseases, okay, that uh, people uh, have right now. And, and, and until we come to that, um, that reality, it's going to continue. Uh, I, I hate to say it, Dr. Dyer. It is. It's going it's to continue. The same pace is going to happen today as it happened 50 years ago and actually 50 years from now unless we change uh, pretty much our, our process as far as people becoming doctors. You know, this is the first show of uh, that today we landed on the year, and I don't even want to say it's an anniversary, but it's a year remembrance of what George Floyd went to, right? We know that's been going on throughout all social media and on TV and all things like that. But when I look at things like that in a, the dying of a black human life or the dying of life period, but when it talks to specifically African-American and black life, this is something we can stop. This is something we can actually put it into if we get into donating and being a part of the solution. You know, there's not many things we can stop out there when it comes to killing of black people, but black people can stop the deaths of black people during this pandemic. We have lost patients because we don't have enough donor blood for sickle cell patients. That hurts. That hurts. It, it, it does. It does, uh, Dr. Dyer. And, and I think it goes back to our history in this country. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and uh, I mean, uh, let's face it, African Americans have, uh, have, have sacrificed so much over the years. Uh, right now, to try to get everyone uh, singing from the same song sheet yeah. is it, 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 very difficult. And, and, and we understand that, okay, uh, as far as being people of color. But uh, if, if we could just get, I'm not going to say Dr. Dyer, not, not get everybody, but just get, a, get more of a percentage of folks mm -hmm. to pretty much uh, uh, be involved with the donation of that gift of life. Right. Okay. Going through their veins that they could help somebody else. If we just had, if we just had one person, Okay, uh, I know the Red Cross has a formula, but if we can just get one one person, okay, out of so many communities, okay, this would be that that would have applied. And 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 I don't know what it's going to take, but hopefully the this initiative uh, by the Red Cross and getting the divine nine. And getting uh, and, and getting all the individuals of influence, our vice president, okay, to get her get her involved, right? In this, uh, because as you know, uh, Dr. Dyer, um, I really hate to, hate to say this, but you know, we only have two presidents in the United States who actually have done anything for citizens. Only two. So we have two presidents, okay, um, and and. And it actually took the last president, pretty much the one signed his name uh, on the um, <laughs> on the bill to get the last two therapies uh, to get them through the uh, the food and drug uh, administration. As a matter of fact, uh, and it's really sad, Dr. Dial. We only have four therapies for sickle cell disease. Right. That is, that is really a travesty. Okay. Well, we have folks who are, there's over a hundred thousand. And that's another thing, Dr. Dyer. We've been using 100,000 sickle cell patients in the U.S. for how many decades? For, we know there's got to be more than 100,000. Right, right. We, It's like we we only register the same number over and over again. Over and over again. Yes, we know, we know the life expectancy, yes, it has increased from 35 to, you know, to in, the, in, the, in the high 40s and approaching 50 right now. But, you know, the this disease, it, it, it varies from person to person. What therapy that you could use to pretty much uh, your native to uh, <laughs> the, the, the part of the disease doesn't doesn't uh, do anything for my wife. No. So uh, so that this is, this is a special 
minimize the disease, but we know the one thing that helps them all, and that's the blood. And that's the blood. And, and that's where it has to start. And if we can start there and just get 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 people of color to understand the importance of that, uh, Dr. Dyer, we just have to keep, we still got to keep fighting and keep getting that message out there. Do that's what do that. Do, and, and this is what we're trying to do here. I thought of something and I've been writing about it and I have to, every time I write and I'm writing on a paper, the, I, I pose a question. Is it because blacks only make up 13% of the population in the United States? And if blacks don't care about taking care of blacks, then why should others? When it comes to specifically many diseases that targets them. Can I say this about that? Uh, that that's a great point. And, and, and the reality is, Dr. Dyer, is uh, uh, non-African Americans have taken care of us. Right. The and most. That blood, okay, that is, that is coming for our sickle cell patients is from non-African Americans. Right. And, 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 just, and just think about that for a second. Also, we were able to get just that maybe that 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 two percent of that thirteen percent got mm -hmm. the diet. That's a start. That'd be that'd be a start. Uh, uh, and and but just trying to get people to understand that, and and also to get over the fear of maybe the needle. Okay, yeah. the fear of actually taking something out of you. Okay, uh, and also we have to really talk up. How long the process takes. It's a finger prick to make sure that your uh, iron, that your iron is is is, uh, is in the in the right uh, right space, and then pretty much the 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 uh, the process itself takes uh, what, twenty minutes to a half an hour at, at and, most. Yes, at, at, at both times. So it's a very short period of time, and, and the way the uh, the folks of the Red Cross know how to find those veins, I'm telling you. Uh, when I go in, uh, if, I, if I play if I play tennis or play an activity the day before or the morning of the blood transfusion and drink my, my fluids mm -hmm. before I eat, pretty much after I play, it seems that the blood flows out of my body faster. It does. I, I had a blood trans. Uh, 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 I gave blood. It took it took almost less than fifteen minutes. Okay, for that for that one unit. I got to I got to challenge you to a tennis game. You know that. Uh, well, um, I, I I love it. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to get together and do it. Um, we're, this is a great part of the country to, to play the sport. Um, you, you see my hero in the background on my. Wall. I see that. I see that right back there. I have I have a chance to meet him, and he was a big proponent. Okay, uh, of sickle cell when uh, when he lived in um, in uh, Westchester County. Uh, and um, and uh, there's a uh, he's done a lot, and, uh, and I can only say that um, we just need to continue to have everybody tell the story. And, uh, and I like your numbers, uh, the 13 percent, and we can get just a, a, a percentage of that to start. I think we can uh, we can get this fight going where we can get folks to uh, get on the bandwagon and get blood. Um, it, you can't put it any better than that. We're going to have more conversations. Um, like I said, um, the different doctors we had on that was coming on the show to join us to talk about this. We'll have them back again. We're all so busy. But more importantly, please understand that you can save a life by getting involved. If you don't, if you need information, contact me, inbox me. If you need any other more information, just look it up. I'm sure you Google all types of stuff. For your Netflix movies, this is just as easy to do that. I know for people living in Maryland, um, we're having a blood drive opening up on June 18th here in Columbia. Uh, we're having a couple of drives throughout the, the summer. But more importantly, look for your closest nationally. Look for your closest blood donation center and go deliver some blood. We need it. We're dangerously low. We're so low across the country on all blood not just african-american blood, but all blood completely because of the pandemic so come in save lives give 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 and you will save a life that i promise you
If I can plug one other thing, uh, uh, Dr. Dyer. Absolutely. I'm the second blood drive here in Harper County, Maryland, <clears throat> at the Boys and Girls Club in uh, Aberdeen, on Bel Air Road in Aberdeen, on Friday, June 11th, from 9 to 2 p.m. Uh, please come out uh, by just going to uh, redcrossblood.org and just look for the uh, for the, uh, for the for the blood donation site or call 800 Red Cross and you can actually do everything over the phone to make your appointment okay for the blood drive uh, and that's the other thing that the uh, Red Cross has done they partnered with the youth yes that, uh, it's so important for our youth to know their blood history mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, as you know sickle cell is one of the few chronic diseases that can be pretty much uh, eliminated well, not eliminated but it can be lessened through education. Yes. And then, then, then the folks, uh, once they know the blood history, they got some decisions to make. Uh, I had to make the same kind of decisions when mm -hmm. uh, when our daughter was born, having having a thalassemia trait, and my wife having sick, uh, having sickle cell disease. But that was that was my wife's primary decision to pretty much go ahead despite the doctors, okay, at the hospital wanting her to abort because wow. She, she, the, the, the baby was going to have the disease. So uh, so that's a testimony pretty much. So those are decisions you have to make, but you can make better decisions when you have the facts. And this is what we're trying to help with our, with our young people to know, know the facts. Uh, here in Maryland, we have a lot of transients coming in because of the, uh, the military. Right. Some of these babies have been born outside of the U.S. Uh, where they weren't tested. Some of them have been born here, but in other states, some of them don't even remember sometimes what their uh, what that test was when they were born. So we're we're trying to right now to uh, to get our youth um, who who can donate blood, 16 years of age or, or, right. or older, okay, with parental consent. Uh, every 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 uh, bit of blood that's donated is going to be tested for sickle cell. Yes. Uh, okay. Going going forward. Uh, and we have another we have another um, issue on the books right now, Dr. Dyer, and that is in the state of Maryland, uh, you cannot yeah. test the sickle cell trait and sickle cell disease at, at health fair. Uh, oh. You can test for AIDS, okay, at a at a health fair, uh, but you can't you can't test for a sickle cell trait. The state has it backwards. I know. But the nomenclature of, uh, of the law has to change. We actually have our delegate here in uh, Harper County. Is uh, is on a campaign to get that get that nomenclature changed, mm -hmm. and and um, and you know again, uh, it, uh, as far as I know, it's the only state, uh, Doctor Dyer, that has that pretty much uh, designation. It does, as far as I know too. And uh, that, that's another that's another travesty. But uh, in any event, we're going to get that changed soon. We got we got uh, enough good people working on that, uh, and uh, we just got to keep keep going forward so we can help our youth. And then and then we're matching. Our association is matching every dollar that uh, goes to the youth organizations that the Red Cross is a part of and these blood drives. We're matching funds with those uh, youth organizations so they can have the funding. Because of the pandemic, they haven't had to have, they haven't right. had funding. So uh, we're going to help them with that. And that's one of our initiatives right now in Carthage, CISA, and even the Eastern Shore, even though uh, the Red Cross isn't involved much with the Red Cross, we're still going to help those uh, youth organizations. Well, is uh, maybe we can fix that situation. Maybe we can get more connected that way. You know, bring everyone really because I think we're 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 running wheels in too many spaces. We need to put the wagon together so we can pull all the way through with this wagon train. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I would have to say uh, this is this is a start. Uh, it is. Uh, hopefully, with this podcast, maybe the stage could uh, could be even uh, expanded. Okay, from this podcast. Uh, to to uh, have people understand the importance of this uh, this blood initiative mm -hmm. for our, for our African American brothers and sisters. Because we got to keep talking, we got to keep preaching, we got to keep educating the other. And as long as we educate one more other person, they'll tell ten people, 
And that's what our goal is. You educate one, they'll tell 10. Well, we'll, we'll take that uh, ratio anytime, uh, uh, Dr. Dyer. That's going to, uh, to move the needle in the right direction. Thank you. God bless. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching with Bridges Live with myself, Dr. Paul Dyer, and Mr. Rudy Williams. We'll be back again to talk more about sickle cell conversations with other people that are involved in this fight. But please get the information, save a life, be active, and do something. I hope that takes care of you, take care of your family, be health, be safe, be happy, be blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh...